fellow freelancers. Hello. So um, today I wanted to go through a couple emails. These are emails, once again, that I received and they're from freelance translators. But what I like to do, obviously I'm censoring the names and everything, but what I like to do is go through these because hopefully you can find them helpful and useful in helping you out. I've done one other of these videos where I go through these uh, emails, but uh, I wanted to do another one just to give you an idea. In general, these, uh, the ones I'm going to go through today aren't too bad, but I still wanted to go through them uh, just to uh, show you what a person receiving them sees. And, you know, from the point of view of someone who has an agency, what we see and what we feel. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. First of all, this, this one, uh, the subject line says English, Spanish, French, Spanish, which right away is good because it tells me A, which languages you translate to and from. B, it shows that Spanish is your native tongue. And so here I, you know, I feel safe because sometimes you see odd language combinations, but here it's a good one. Now, two undisclosed recipients, that's fine. Uh, I've mentioned this before. Obviously, many times you're sending these emails out to many different people. Uh, you know, it would probably be, I mean, I don't know. It, to me, it makes no difference. I mean, maybe for some people, it's better if you send it uh, a separate email to each person. For me, it's fine if you send to undisclosed recipients. The only thing to worry about is when you do this, very often uh, some, some email um, programs will register you as spam just because you're sending to 20, 50 different email addresses or, you know, uh, 10 different email addresses at a time, but 10 times a day, something like that. Anyway, dear sir, madam, that's fine, I guess. Um, and then there's odd spacing here, but, you know, whatever, I can look past it. I'm a Spanish freelance translator, another odd spacing here. I graduated in, there's another odd spacing here and here, which is starting to bother me a bit, but fine. Look, I am a Spanish freelance translator. I graduated in 2010 in translation and interpreting in Spain. And in 2011, I studied uh, MA in translation for Publishing's World. Um, I've mentioned this before as well. Get a native speaker to go through it. Even though English, well, here it says from English is one of his languages, but obviously it's not his native tongue. Still, hire someone if you have to, or at least ask someone. Chances are you know someone who's a native English speaker and have them go through this. Even if none of your languages is English, if you're sending an email in English, it kind of just shows professionalism if you can actually have it in standard English. Here, this is obviously not written by a native English speaker, which is fine, but there are some mistakes, and uh, so it's better if you have someone review it. Anyway, but otherwise, so far, it's okay. I have great skills in translating, as I have been translating professionally since I finished my studies. You can take this sentence out. Uh, it, it doesn't really say much uh, for, you know, and, and in these you want to receive some information, you know, here, Spanish freelance translator, and so you reiterate that Spanish is your first language, graduate in 2010 translation interpreting, good, you have a degree in that, and MA in translation for publishing world, so you, you have a lot of study in translation, even though you have some mistakes here, but, you know, it shows that you have skills. You don't need this part. Take it out. Um, then I have experience in translating legal, retail, fashion, art, and literary texts. Fine. I can translate up to 3,000 words a day and proofread 5,000. This seems like quite a bit, but you said up to. So, you know, it means it'll depend. And, uh, and so, you know, it could be 3,000 and fewer. And, yeah, so you, you see this actually quite often. Up to 3,000. Proofread 5,000 seems also quite a bit, but, you know, same thing. Uh, regarding the race, I usually charge 7 euro here again. You know, it, it just shows a lack of attention to detail because there's no space here. Uh, maybe that's the way you do it there, but in English, you uh, you you don't. Um, I mean, not as far as I know in Spanish either. Anyway, it seems odd that there's no space here, so I, I would have someone look over it again. Same thing. Uh, and by the way, seven cent, euro cents per word is a, a bit on the high side, uh, so I'm going to assume, but you don't have a link here to any pros.com or any other... Uh, online, um, you know, maybe he does it in the, in the resume, but, uh, but here I don't see any link to any pros. So this seems a bit high for someone who has no real track record, even though they have a degree in it. What matters after you have your degree is frankly your track record. Um, so anyway, fine. Your source for, uh, for proofreading. Rates are flexible as they can be adapted on the type of text. Now look, this is fine as well, but just realize that if you write rates are flexible, uh, right away I'm going to ask you for a lower rate, you know, because any, uh, any uh, company hiring is going to do that, at least to try. 
and uh, and see what happens. Now, if it's you know then a very technical text or something like that, you can insist upon your rate, but chances are people are going to expect less from you. Um, depending on the type of text, the amount of work per month, or even the deadline. Fine, I can manage PDF files. I work with different CAD tools if required, and I have skills in photo and web design. Okay, that's good. I think of I think of myself as a really reliable person. I always keep the delivery time and deliver text without mistakes, as I proofread before sending. Uh, I mean, this I would expect it, but you can. I mean, none of this is really. You can say I proofread before sending. I guess that you know can help a bit. I'm really interested in long-term cooperation. This is the best way to show you my professional attitude and reliability. Hope my CV is of your interest, Spanish translator. So again, this is not bad. I would have uh, a native speaker go over it just to make sure that it sounds good. Preferably someone who can tell you, you know, who can give some advice. Like I would take this sentence out, quite frankly. Uh, if you have an online profile, you should include it in the body of the email because not everyone clicking on your resume is actually a quite a big step, um, at least for me and I think for most people because. You know, that's where you can find viruses and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, the more you can include here in the body of the email, the better it is. Um, and including an online profile, because that way it's a quick way for us to find out who you are. Anyway, uh, so that's it for this one. Let's go on to the next one. So this is uh, right away, right off the bat, proficient English Indonesian and English Norwegian translator. Okay, two things. First of all, proficient. In your subject line, I mean, proofread everything, but especially the subject line, because this is what pops up right away to decide if we're going to click on it or not. And, the, you know, frankly, the only reason I clicked on this was for this video. If you have a typo in your subject line, I'm sorry. I'm absolutely not accepting you as a translator. And uh, so anyway, and also I found it weird that English to Indonesian and English to Norwegian. First of all, Indonesian is spelled incorrectly um, if you're writing in English. And, uh, and second of all, I mean, this is a very odd language combination. I actually don't remember the person's name to see if it was more on the Norwegian or Indonesian side. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, here it says native Indonesian. So look, and here you spelt Indonesian correctly and here you didn't. So I mean, yeah, you, you need to look over these things. So anyway, dear sir, madam, I am, uh, um, I am a native English speaker. I don't know if this was just the name. I think it was just the name that I did. So this is incorrect English already, but fine. English Indonesian. So again, have someone read over it. Now, look, you can notice the odd formatting here, and stuff like this will happen. Uh, you can, a good way to make sure the formatting isn't too weird is to send this to yourself or to, you know, some friends who, are, who have Hotmail, Gmail, other things, and see how it looks on different email accounts. But by and large, honestly, it's fine. Um, I translate from English into Indonesian, English to Norwegian, and vice versa. Uh, so this is a bit of an issue. These are completely different languages, English, Indonesian, and Norwegian, and vice versa. I assume this means from Indonesian to English, Norwegian to English. Um, you know, this is a lot. If you're native Indonesian, I would stick to English into Indonesian. It's weird that you don't have Norwegian into Indonesian, although, you know, I doubt there's very much demand for it. But uh, anyway, fine. I have 17 years of experience as a freelancer in translation as well as localization, Okay. I translate in many fields of expertise. Uh, again, this science sounds kind of odd, just had a native speaker read over it. Uh, human resource, medicine, pharmacology, medical devices, philosophy, chemistry, bio, biomedical products, law, legal, contracts, psychology, information technology, software. Look okay, Th this is way too much. You're obviously, uh, I mean, I'm sure you've translated in these fields, but um, they're not your expertise. Uh, so in terms of expertise, don't don't overdo it. I know you feel like you might miss out on something, but you really should concentrate because, you know, when someone sees something like this, they're not going to, uh, you know, they're not going to think you're an expert in all of these. Now, people might still hire you, but the type of people who want a cheap translator and who don't care too much. Um, and I can see right here, you're not a cheap translator. Uh, so even though you say your rate is negotiable. So, you know, you have medical stuff, fine. Then say medical and then under medical, put all these stuff. And if you want to add law, then say legal and under legal, put all this stuff. But then you have psychology, sociology, linguistics, all these other things. You know, you, you, need to, you need to make a choice. And in fact, legal and medical are both pretty specialized. I would pick, I mean, you know, you, you have a couple examples in each, but honestly, I would pick one or the other. But, you know, see, see how it helps. Here is too much of a jumble, though. Translate around 3,000 words per day, okay. Um, it, you know, can be quite a bit, but fine. You know, you're using cat tools. Uh, I would put up to 3,000 words per day, but anyway. I charge seven 
0.7 euros, my, my, my rate is negotiable, 0.07 euros. So uh, once again, like I mentioned before, uh, then uh, use CAT tools such as Trados, uh, WordPress. That's good. I'm either to work for you in the near future. Um, okay, fine. The only other thing is I would include an online profile once again for the same reason. Um, but at least this is a PDF and not a doc. Uh, by the way, when you send a resume, always send PDF and not a doc. So anyway, that's this one. Uh, let's go into the next one. Spanish to English translator right away. I am a Spanish mother tongue translator for English and vice versa. So no, uh, pick one once again as your mother tongue. If you're Spanish mother tongue, then do English to Spanish. I mean, you could say vice versa, but then write in correct English, come on. Uh, my translation experience has been especially in the areas finance, business, marketing, real estate, tourism. Yeah, that's fine. You have legal engineering and stuff which gets a bit specialized, but it seems like your main stuff is finance and business and stuff that has to do with that. I mean, okay. Uh, I prefer to translate documents written in MS Word format. No, uh, I wouldn't do that. Honestly, you know, as someone who receives uh, as an agency, I don't know what the end client is going to send me. And if you tell me right away that you only work in MS Word, uh, you know, that just sounds... Chances are people either ignore it or, you know, they won't want to deal with someone that has too many requests like that. By the way, if you do only prefer MS Word, you can always deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. If someone sends you like a scanned document, you can be like, sorry, I can't work with this right now, or just say that you're busy right now and can't work on that specific document. Most documents will be in Word, so uh, you can take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but I wouldn't lay it out right away right now because you don't want to limit the number of people who want to hire you right away. My daily output is 3,000 words a day. Once again, seems to be a very common number these days. Um, I'm a full-time translator. Okay, I'm looking forward to work with you. You can leave this out. Um, I mean, no, I guess it's fine. You can leave it in if you want. Uh, you know, again, you don't have anything. I'm sure you have it in your resume, but it would be good if you have an online profile online. Um, it seems like this batch that I chose, very few people did it. Or at least, you know, what people do often is also just a list of specific things, more specific things they've worked on, more specific than this, because this doesn't really tell me much. Um, anyway, let's go to the next one. So, high quality and more accurate English to Korean translation. I don't know what you mean by more accurate. More accurate than what? You can just say accurate. Anyway, dear sir, madam, I've been waiting for an opportunity like this to write to you. Well, I don't know. That's odd. I mean, but fine. Okay. I understand people write differently and, uh, you know, different people write differently. Please take into consideration my application for that, for the position of freelance English to Korean translator. So I like that he bolded it here, actually. Here he has it going both ways, but here freelance English to Korean and, and he specifies Korean. I wouldn't have both arrows here, honestly. If you're doing English to Korean, just concentrate on that and have that be your expertise. I strongly believe that your company will benefit from my rich experience, knowledge, skills, and know-how in translation. You can probably leave that sentence out. Here are the highlights of my professional career. Now here, I don't know what, the formatting is very odd. And so when you talk about being more accurate here, and then, you know, I understand this isn't part of the translation, but an attention to detail would be nice. Um, you know, a bit of attention to detail. Anyway, so 12 years of extensive experience in, tra in translation industry, in the translation industry, plus you need an apostrophe here. Very familiar with IT and marketing industry, reliable quality by checking quality with applications. I, I don't know what that means. They're using, you mean cat tools, but you mentioned cat tools here, or some, I don't know what applications you're checking, or I'm, I'm not really sure what that means. Good at using cats. You should specify which cat tools, and they're called cat tools usually, not cats, but quick response to requests. Again, have a native English speaker read over it. Uh, I would appreciate the opportunity to further discuss my experience and qualifications. Would feel free to contact me via, via email. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, otherwise the same stuff. Have an online profile I can click on, it will be nice. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. Now, right away, Swedish to English to German, po professional. So not very professional if you don't spell professional correctly. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, that's weird. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Dear ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, uh, it is my pleaser. That's not how you spell pleasure. Um, it's my pleaser to be in your, in your teamwork. Okay. You need an, a native English speaker. And I hope you don't say that English is one, you know, here you do in, in t as well as two English. No, concentrate your native in Swedish. So I would concentrate in English and German into Swedish. 
If you're living in Germany, maybe you can add German there, but don't say that you do into English when this is obviously not a language that you're comfortable in. Uh, I got a master's degree. I mean, okay, if I got a master's degree in engineering electronics, Bachelor of Indiana, Germany. Okay, bachelor's degree in chemical engineering in Lund, Sweden. Moreover, I got a diploma, blah, 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 from Lund, Sweden. Okay, so civil engineering, chemical engineering, this is actually good stuff for technical translations. Actually, I mean, look, if you can have someone read over your stuff, you'll be in high demand. People who can do these technical translations and stuff like German and Swedish to English, I know there's quite a bit of demand around there. So, you know, clean this up a bit. Uh, I specialize in journalism, education, communication, applied science, technology. Okay, uh, right away, all your experience is engineering and technical stuff, but for some reason you have journalism, education, communication as the first things. It seems a bit odd. Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, I would try to concentrate on the more tech technology, technology patterns, pharmaceutical economics, you know, stuff like that, technical. I mean, you have technical, anyway, fine. I would put these first, uh, and in fact, just take these ones out, quite frankly. Um, and because uh, these aren't very specialized in general, maybe education a bit, but uh, I'm a professional user of Trados and MMLQ. I don't know what professional user means. I use it for your profession, but I assume that that's what everyone does. Not many people use them for fun. Looking forward to hearing from you, ASP. It's ASAP. Again, have someone re review it. Regards here. And here you have I, what I assume is a quote in Arabic. I don't read Arabic, so unfortunately I can't uh, specify, but... Uh, the only thing here is that it's in a different language from the ones you offer, which can be a bit confusing. A lot of times people are just scouring these very quickly, and if they see Arabic at the bottom, they're going to assume that Arabic is one of your languages, and, uh, and so that can create a, a little bit of confusion. You know, maybe. I don't know. Obviously, if they read through it, they'll know that isn't the case, uh, but, uh, you know, just something to keep in mind. If you have a quote that's in a language other than the ones you're offering, uh, it can be a, a bit confusing. And then here's the last one, uh, at least for now. Um, Japanese to English translator, proofreader. Uh, not very good proofreader here, if uh, you didn't spot that. So, hello. Again, a bit of a space, but that's fine. I express my interest in working with your respected company and joining your team of translators as being an accomplished English Japanese translator with proven success with translating, drafting, creating, editing, proofreading documents and materials that help multinational and domestic Japanese firms to communicate more effectively internationally and nationally. This is a very long sentence, but actually it's fine. Once again, different people write in different ways, different cultures and countries write in different ways. So I wouldn't mind this all that much. If, you know, I mean, this still bothers me and that's why I would only specify English in, into Japanese. I think this person was Japanese. Um, but, uh, but, you know, this is a long sentence and it's a bit awkward. Um, but frankly, it's fine, honestly. If, uh, you know, if you're a Japanese national, then, you know, it's fine to express yourself a bit differently and, and you know, that's fine. Technical skills include working proficiently in MS office, blah, 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 Lotus Notes, Trails, excellent. Uh, in the past 10 years, as a, tr as a freelancer, I've translated various documents, financial reports, lawsuit related documents. This is good also. You get into kind of the specifics of what you translate and I can see statements and your reports. Uh, mem uh, you know, memorandums, uh, memorandums, uh, memorandae, memorandi, memorandi, memorandums, anyway, minutes, accounting procedures, rules, and other business, you know, perfect. And these are all in, you know, the business uh, s sector. And so, yeah, that's great. Please refer to the company CV for more details and information regarding my ability and skill sets. Thank you for your time and consideration. So here, this is actually an excellent email. I mean, and you completely ruin it with this, unfortunately. Um, I, uh, you know, I mean, this is so easy and I don't see, you know, after I think spending quite a bit of time on this, it seems weird that you would get that wrong in the subject, but fix that up. If you fix that up, then this is a CV that I would click on, you know, especially if I have some need or, you know, every now and then need for Japanese English, uh, translators, English into Japanese, I should say, then, um, you know, this is something I will click on, but unfortunately that anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully you find this useful when you're writing up your emails and hopefully it can help you out so you don't make the same mistakes. Once again, uh, I, I think I have an old uh, YouTube video where I go through a, a template as an email that you can send out to, uh, to prospective agencies or clients. Uh, definitely my course, I have that and I go through it in some detail about how to do it and how to create your own template so you can then tweak it depending on which client you're contacting. But uh, yeah, hopefully you find this useful and uh, please let me know if you do find this useful and if you want more uh, videos like this in the future, you know, something along these lines where I go through emails that I receive and, uh, 
and try to point out what works and what doesn't. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye.